<laughs> All right, good afternoon, everybody. We are now live, and thank you for being to the very first call on the North American Vision Call panel. And I've got some really uh, special people on the call today. Um, I'm gonna have you go around, just introduce yourself and say where you're from in just one second. But I just wanted to say thank you for being here. It really is um, an honor to put this together and really kind of moderate this with top agents from around the nation, North America specifically. Um, I'm humble and blessed to be amongst them. And I'm really excited to put this kind of talent. We have a lot of horsepower on this call today. I can, I can promise you that. And, um, you know, there's no cost to be here. Actually, there is a cost. I'll tell you this. The cost is share it with somebody if you find value in this. If you find value in this call, I, I think there's a lot of value on multiple levels. Tag somebody, share it with somebody. Let's spread the word and make this as big as it could be and, and as powerful and, and have the reach that it's capable of. Um, you know, with that, I just want to turn it over to the panel. Uh, start maybe at the top left. Introduce yourself, kind of where you're from. And, um, and then we'll get kind of into the Q&A of part of it. And I'm um, looking forward to being with you guys today. All right. Thanks, Randy. I'll go ahead and jump in. My name is Tom Daves uh, with EXP Realty. And I'm from uh, the greater Sacramento area in uh, Northern California. Glad to be here. Thank you, Tom. Welcome. All right. Uh, my name is Lincoln. Uh, I'm from Canada in uh, the Toronto. I'm just north of Toronto, about 45 minutes north in Barrie. I'm with uh, Keller Williams Experience here. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Lincoln. Appreciate you being here. Um, hi, I'm Liz Wall. I'm from New York. I'm with Brown Harris Stevens. I actually sell in two markets, the New York City market and the Hamptons market. And I'm very excited to be part of this. Thank you, Thanks, Elizabeth. Man. Again, Hi, we Liz. can tell that beautiful New York accent. We know which state <laughs> you're from. All right. I'll go next. I'm Kim Davis, and I'm in North Florida, actually a Ponte Vedra Beach area. I've owned my own company now for 27 years and um, am licensed in multiple states, but um, and so excited that we're doing this and having such a great cross section of. Um, qualified brokers and really rock stars, in my opinion, too. We certainly do. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate you being here. Sure. Carrie? Or Mike? Hey, guys. I'm oh, Carrie Scholl. I'm from the Washington... Can you guys hear me? Yes. Cool. Broke I'm from the bit. Washington, D.C. market, and I... Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm Carrie Shaw. Um, I'm from the Washington, D.C. market, and I'm super excited to be here. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I, up, know, I know we have the whole world on Zoom right now, so, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll work yeah. through it. You guys, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. My name's Mike Bjorkman. I'm in Southern California, just north of Los Angeles. Um, I'm at EXP, and I've been uh, in real estate since 1990. And glad to be here. Thanks for putting this together, Andy. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. And we're not going to brag on their qualifications. You guys could look it up if you want to, but we literally have some of the top, top agents in the nation by any measure littering the list of, of the best. And um, they're here for you. You know, they volunteered to do this and, and I'm just really blessed to have them. And I think Carrie said something right before we went live that was very valuable. I'd love to bring up first if we could. Carrie, would you like to talk maybe about that piece? Hopefully my internet will work. I know, um, fingers crossed. Especially because what I'm going to say, if the internet doesn't work, is a tough one. But I hear everybody talking about social distancing right now, and I prefer to say physical distancing because right now more than ever, we need to come together and groups like this where we're bringing value to each other and we're collaborating don't make us feel isolated. They make us feel empowered, and I think that's what's so important right now. That's such a great point. And you froze, but your the language came out perfectly. Didn't everybody hear it okay? Yeah. So, I yay! That was great. Luckily, was you froze in a really perfect place to your like, <laughs> you're just beautiful pose. Yeah. But so social like distancing. The, real quick, I like the saying it's social distancing, but it's not social disengagement. We need to stay engaged even more so and over communicate with each other, with our family, our loved ones, our community and our um, company and our clients. 
I love that. That's perfect. Yeah. Great, great point. Anybody have anything to add to that? I know we've got New York in the house with Elizabeth. You guys, I've seen pictures of Times Square. It literally looks like the day after the parade where nobody's there and there's just litter in the streets. But um, how, what's going on there for you? Um, well, you know, we're um, definitely on lockdown yeah. here. Uh, um, we have a stay at home order from our governor, Sue, except for essential businesses, which real estate is not one. Um, we're, we're not really working. We can't do showings. We can't do open houses. Um, one of the things that I'm working on right now, and it goes to, I think, Carrie's point a little bit, is I do an, e an email newsletter, which goes out every four to six weeks. And uh, the topic of my newsletter this time is going to be all the different things that are open to us um, that we can do online. I and mean, Lincoln Center is having concerts that you do online. There are book clubs online. And just to give people ideas for that, as well as there are games that people can play together online. Um, so that's something that I'm prioritizing right now. I love that. And, and you know, thanks for sharing. Um, New York's obviously um, one of the epicenters of so Seattle, just above me as well. And, um, you know, we got both ends of the nation that are um, struggling with that. And, you know, one of the questions I'd love to produce to the panel, if you guys would, and, you know, what are you doing personally to remain optimistic? I mean, I caught myself in the news last week. I, you know, as much as I don't watch the news, I caught myself caught up in trying to keep up with the current events. What do you do personally to keep yourself optimistic in these times? So myself personally, I'll jump in. Um, I stick with my morning routine and my rituals. You know, I get up first thing in the morning, uh, drink 20 ounces of water, read the Bible, pray, journal, um, work out while I'm doing that. Um, I'm just feeding my mind with positive podcasts, positive growth minded, um, different YouTubes. So I can, you know, just really start the day off right. And I'm sure everyone in this group has similar rituals, but um, if I stick to that, then I'm going to, it's going to set my day off with the right tone. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with that, that our morning ritual, there's our alone time that we need to work on our own mindset and our own mind, body, and soul. And that's kind of like an hour a day of self-help, an hour a day of skill set. But as soon as I'm done with that, I reach out and what, what we need to understand as realtors right now, we are people's leaders and people are begging and just dying for leadership. And the more that I reach out to people, and interact with people, and I'm using primarily Facebook Messenger with video and groups, right? You guys know building a group as a real estate agent is hard to do, but there's three groups that you should be building right now. That's your neighborhood group your community group, like I live in Santa Clarita, we just built a group, it's already got like 700 people in a couple of days, Santa Clarita helping Santa Clarita. And the group, the other group you should be building is your, um, your sphere of influence as far as your past clients, like your Mike Bjorkman uh, group where you put all your sphere and all your group in. So you have a big community one, a tight one, and then your neighborhood one. And these groups are building and growing faster than ever. And as we are leaders and we're strong-minded and we're putting forth the effort to be strong then people come to us and they wear their sounding boards and they're you know crying on our shoulders but that helps me remain strong so i surround myself with awesome people like you all day and then i help lead others and when i help lead others that helps me just recharge and be a leader and i know that i have to just be strong and be very optimistic knowing we're going to come out of this on the other side golden and just plow forward like that. So working on myself, then reaching out to others and helping them, and then surrounding myself with people like you, that's what's making me stay super strong-minded. I'd like to comment next. Um, I think the first thing is self-care, and I don't want it to sound selfish because it's not, It's but it's self-care. And it's just like you said, um, Lincoln, if we, excuse me, um, if we don't take care of ourselves, either like meditating, exercise, correct diet, sleeping, all of those factors make us productive and healthy so that we can help other people and be the leaders that they're looking for in this environment. And that's first and foremost for me. And 
you know, Randy knows personally, I'm, I'm a big health nut <laughs> and uh, it's very important at this point. Absolutely. Let me let Carrie back in. There we go. There's Carrie. It's okay, You're Carrie. Back. It's it's okay. We got you. Sorry, so, guys. I don't know what's going on. That's okay. Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, you know how you're staying optimistic right now, Carrie? Yeah, I think um, for me, I'm always looking at the statistics. I'm always trying to figure out how to approach the business in different ways, and so. I think problem solving is part of what keeps me optimistic. And what I'm seeing is just that there's a ton of people, there's sellers who want a buyer and buyers who want a house. And so as long as you're innovative about how to put those groups together, you're going to continue succeeding. So um, that keeps me really jazzed and really excited about the opportunity we have to lead I don't think the business has to die right now. It's not for my team. My team is really busy. And I think that if agents take cues from the leaders that are still able to continue working and are changing what they're doing business, they can keep succeeding at a high level as well. That's great. That's I'll so add a little great. bit to that is what, what I've been doing is I write down my six areas, what, what, which are to keep me focused, which is energy, necessity, productivity, courage, influence, and clarity. And under those six headings, I can figure out what, where I need to focus for the day and where people need it most. And have a message on those six items which keep, keep me going. Love that. Yeah, I love that. Oh. Anybody else? Okay, so transition now. How are you keeping your teams motivated and optimistic during this time? Um, because that, you know, now you're dealing with multiple personalities. You can't control that element of it. But what are you doing personally as a team leader? Um, and I know some of you have significant teams, um, maybe even dozens of people that you're in your circle. So how are you keeping them motivated and away from the noise? Right? And Carrie's like, me. I'll go first. <laughs> I, have, um, I have 90 people. And so All right, one say of the that number again. 90. Nine wow. zero. Wow. Nine zero. So Thanks. one of the first things I had to do was just shut down the panic shares, right? Like they were starting to use all staff as a, a way of sharing their anxiety. And I just said, guys, this listserv is not for that. It's for proactive solutions. I trust that you can all figure out how to get your news. It's not going to be here. So part of it is just like setting the tone as the leader, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, if someone wants to share something that's proactive, a way that they're using Zoom, how they're getting their um, buyer agreements and listing agreements signed virtually and still, all of those things are welcome. What's not welcome is, oh my God, did you hear this restaurant had this happen and this person might test positive? Like, nope. Not here, not welcome. That's not how we're going to approach this. So I'm a little bit black and white and the like continual um, stuff. I'm all about us coming together and helping our community. So we're absolutely sharing requests for, for need. That's different, but the rumor mill is just out of control. And so I just put an end to that completely. And then we did a lot of training and leaned into that. Um, tomorrow, we have a surprise for our team. I'm not going to say what it is. It's going to be hilarious. And Randy, Nobody's if you want, I'll share it inside the group. I'm, I'm not telling you, but of this panel, and all of you will laugh so hard at the first 15 minutes of my team meeting. So I try and bring humor. Like I'm the kind of team leader that usually there's jello shots at my team meetings or champagne or something fun, right? So I can't do that virtually. Instead, I'm going to bring something to the team meeting that'll shock everyone and I'll bring it to the panel <laughs> next time. I love it. Thank you for that. I can't wait. So Friday, you guys, uh, we get that surprise. Sure. You know, you guys, I, I just wrote down jello shots. Yeah, I, probably, I just added that to my repertoire of meetings. You know, the, the, the thing, what thing Carrie says is so true. Like, 
I, I tell, you, you know, and, and Carrie will laugh, but I use all my teams are on Marco Polo, right? So we have different Marco Polos for different things. And I tell them, I said, I love you guys individually. If you need help or if you want to share something that's negative or scary or whatever, why don't we discuss that amongst me and you? And then I'll let you know if it's appropriate for the group Marco Polo or, or our private Facebook page. If, and we'll decide together as a team to see if it's that big of a deal. Because in the past, I found myself panic sharing things like, like I completely <laughs> lost my mind. But as I grow and grow and more in leadership, I have to, just like Carrie said, keep that, keep that under control. But I am reaching out to them individually and I'm lifting their spirits. And, but what I do ask them to share, and it's kind of a, a must, is share your successes. You know, so our transaction coordinator, our marketing person, our team, our buyers, agents, listing agents, they're all sharing successes on Marco Polo and Facebook saying, hey guys, you'd never believe I reached out to this person to see if they needed this and they came back with that. So the more that we're sharing closings every day, normally we don't share closings or we don't share pendings, but we're sharing it to prove that things are still happening and working. And even if it's a small success, like, hey, they said when this is all over, they want to list. Hey, they said they want a buyer consultation over Zoom and I'm sharing it and it's pumping me up like you got off the phone with your coach before this and you were all pumped up so the more they're pumping each other up they're actually they're like chained animals I can tell they want to go out and just sell the crap out of everything and mm -hmm. I love but if we were talking doom and gloom like you know like like the secret says stay informed but not inundated with crap like just be smart and pay attention to what you need to but do not let your teams fly off the handle like there's people wanting to join my team right now that i've never met and that's just because of social media and there's people leaving my team right now because they think that i'm crazy that i should be in a bomb shelter so <laughs> it's it's nature's way of sorting all this out but i think sharing success with your team and making it mandatory and meeting more often, meeting more Zooms, more Marco Polos, and more Facebook activity. I think the more the better right now because nobody wants to be scared and isolated. So share your successes and share. I try to share two or three skill set things every day. Like, hey guys, I just learned this on the world. I just learned this in, on Zoom. I just learned this or this script is really working. And I, and I hate to say script, but they are all scripts, right? Like these are the points I want to get across. So those things are smashing it right now. And the pent up energy of buyers and sellers right now is ridiculous. And if this stimulus package is a third of what they say it's going to be, we are going to be fine. We are going to be fine. It might be two months, it might be three, but we are going to come out of this rocking and rolling. Another hour. What was that? <laughs> Somebody said something or else that was an alien interjection or something. Uh, I'll shut up, but that's what I wanted to get across. No, with. no, I, you, that literally gave me goosebumps, Mike. I'm, I'm honest. So uh, that is this, the spirit. That's the inspiration. That's the message that comes from inside. You don't make up, right? I want to follow you. And, and if anybody watching this call today gets anything, that's who you want to hook your wagons to right now. That's who you want to lock arms with is those people because they're all available, right? Both sides are available. You can find the other ones just as easy, maybe easier, but thank you for that. So on that point, maybe we could spend a couple minutes on, are you doing transactions now around the wheel? Are, are you shut down? Are you locked up in a bunker or are you doing transactions? Because the world doesn't think there's anything going on right now. Yeah, we're still doing transactions here in Northern California. Um, our MLS has been reporting about 150 transactions a day, which is, it is slightly down from about 200 a day, but um, that's one of the things that I um, share with my team, as well as the numbers that we're, um, you know, listing, selling, uh, putting into contract on the team, because they just need to hear that, Buyers are buying and sellers are selling, and that's all that matters for this today. That's that's so valuable, Tom. So you're saying there's 150 transactions going into into a contract escrow status, right? I know it's different yeah, in all states. Right. Yesterday Canada. there were 151 new pending escrows in my market. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. That's, that's oh. great. That's great information. That's a big number, yeah. What about around the horn? What have, what are the other agents seeing? Ours is down really, really big. Very, very like huge, huge drop off. So but people right are now, buying and selling. Just not doing very much at all. Yeah, it's really 
uh, everybody's still in we're we're in the phase of uh of more of the lockdown phase where there's every, all the essential services are being announced tonight and everything else has to close um yeah they're giving out thousand dollar fines if you're in groups of 10 people or more right the they're they're doing so, that they're doing that throughout yeah. california so that's, that's that's hitting us hard right now so there's a lot of we're a lot of you know shell shocked people right now right but I think that maybe in another week or two when people start to realize that hey we can you know you can still go out and things like that we'll we'll see a bit more and really pushing telling everybody again just keep pushing that value you know talk to people about instead of you know saying hey go list your house talk to them about the things they could be doing uh like using this time while they're stuck at home to do the small odd jobs they wanted to do to get their house ready for down the road when it hits and things like that okay. um again online con online consultations buyers sellers and also being that resource for the community um so i've been uh, like I said, I've been going out with my drone and showing different restaurants and trying to help promote those restaurants that to stay in business, to help them out. Those are the places that you go to before all this happened and now you're not there. Totally. And I'm, I'm doing a, a drone kind of a, going around the, the restaurant and then getting that restaurant owner uh, on that Facebook live group saying, here's what we're offering just so people have those options and to try and help the community keep going. And you're not doing that for you, Lincoln. I know you, right? You're doing that for the betterment of the community. And Tom yep. Ferry said something the other day in an all hands meeting for all the coaching clients and coaches. He said that uh, brands are going to be made and destroyed in the next 90 days. Yep. If you're an ambulance, I would agree. And it's yep. obvious that, that you mm -hmm. have a, a motive, then you're going to be exposed in this market. You're going to be exposed. And if you're out there doing good for the yep. community, you're going to be exposed. And, and I've, I've seen that online already. I agree. Comments. Yeah, absolutely. Carrie, what do you see in transactionally in your area? So I actually pulled the transactions looking at last year compared to this year, and it's almost exactly even. Um, wow. For my team personally, we're up over 50% compared to the same time last year. So we're cranking. Uh, so you last guys are selling and, and going through the motions in somewhat of a normal fashion. We are. Uh, interestingly enough, though, last week, 12 homes in a day was our record before this. We hit 12 homes last week. We hit 29 for the week, which 30 would have broke the record before. Uh, so wow. Wow. We're just really busy. Wow, that's cranking. <laughs> And so that is so contradictory to what we're here, what the media is promoting, correct? I mean, that's the purpose of this call. Everybody live and everybody that's going to watch this recording later, think about this. Are you in a sh under a shell watching, you know, the two news channels, which have <laughs> opposing opinions, or are you in, in yeah. action and doing business? Because that's really what this comes down to. Well, and here are the facts in my mind, as I see it, showings are down. And so everybody's like, oh my God, showings are down. Okay, the serious people are still buying. So instead of focusing on the showings, when you're creating the, the information that you're sharing with your clients, focus on that the people who are out are the most serious people because ratifications aren't down. So do you want to show your home to 30 people, 15 of which are really not that interested and not ready, they're just learning about the market, or would you rather show it to 15 that are serious and still get the result that you want, which is getting your home sold? Absolutely. That's you are point. pro, clearly. What I'd like to make a comment about is interesting. Yeah. Elizabeth made a comment that the governor, I think, of New York said that real estate was a non-essential. Is that correct, Elizabeth? California and oh. Oregon as well. Yeah, that is. I mean, they, um, they're trying to get that changed. I don't know if they'll be able to, but just from the sense of what's going on here, and especially in New York City, because of the way, you know, it's all apartments and it's co-ops and it's condominiums, it right. would be very difficult anyway to actually be out physically showing um, apartments. But that being said, I mean, there were like transactions that took place during the past week, um, things that I've heard anecdotally from my managers, and also, you know, just the number of closings that have taken place, no idea what will happen going forward. But people who have been looking for a while and who are serious about buying something are finding an opportunity now to be able to make an offer. The reason I asked that our governor of Florida said that we are an essential 
part of the economy. We are an essential part of the business and we're not getting special treatment by any means, but they've implemented certain things for us not to be doing. We're not allowed to do live open houses anymore. And of course we have addendums to the virus and all of the things that everybody else I think has at this point. But I think more than anything, I mean, we're staying busy, but it's a day to day, hour by hour thing. And I think you're seeing it happen by day. Each day is different. It's very fluid right now. And, you know, there's always going to be buyers and sellers in any real estate market. Um, and I think if we understand and know how to approach it, especially very empathetically now, and um, not a hard sell by any means, but, it, you know, understanding where they're coming from, because we're all going through this together. And, um, but, you know, we're having some buyers and sellers say, no, I really want to wait. And you have to respect that. Then you have buyers and sellers that say, no, I absolutely need to sell. I want to sell. How are you going to help me do that? So we implement a protocol, a safety protocol, and, and help them achieve that, um, doing lots of virtual presentations. And it's a great time for agents and our teams to redevelop the presentations, even to work on our skill set. Um, to do online training, to do a lot of things that maybe they've not had time to do before. So those question. are some important points for me, I think. Great, great point, Kim. Um, Mike, would you tell us how businesses, uh, not necessarily for you specifically, but your region, your area, and, and, and your team? Yeah, the, our area seems to be doing just fine. The you know, CAR came out, California Association of Realtors said we're a non-essential business. Our yeah. city says we are. I've always been the ask for forgiveness, not permission guy. You know, I'm always the rebel. Um, there are people, I had a couple last night say, I want you to come out. We'll be very safe. And I'm down with that. But, you know, there's anything I can do virtually. That's, that's super important. Um, I've probably given, you know, 10 ish uh, listing presentations online in the last couple of days. But what I'm telling the agents to do and another mindset trick is to run your hot sheet every single day right? Mm -hmm. Not only run your hot sheet, but watch who's doing the deals, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to see your competitors doing transactions and it's going to fire you up from your core, right? Like, you're like if so-and-so is selling homes, I'm going to be selling homes. But watching the hot <laughs> sheet gives you a lot of hope and, you know, and you're like, wow, okay, things are still happening and it helps agents come out of their hole. And that, and yes, I did notice our, our, our pendings are down probably 20, 30%. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's enough for me to go, huh, something's happening. But like I said, if you if you stay focused on what is happening and you can see the reality, then you need to be in that reality and force yourself to get that reality. Um, I think what Kim just said was paramount. Like, practice your craft right now more than anything. We're going to come out of this different. We're going to be a different uh, society of realtors, right? We're going to do a lot of stuff. A couple months ago when I was teaching listing classes over Zoom, people were laughing at me, calling me insensitive and calling me a moron and that I'm, I'm too cool to go to the house. And this week they're all going, you're a genius and teach me how to do it. And those are the classes that I've been doing. But we're saving time, we're saving energy, we're saving money, and we're doing things virtually that we should be doing. Like we should be doing it. People don't want you to come into their house if you don't have to. Like even if it ends their tomorrow, home? they're still gonna feel that way for a while. Yeah. Right. We've been doing video tours that are spectacular for years. And when I go through the MLS, which I did the other day in a class, and I tried to show all these students of mine how many agents really aren't doing it, because on Facebook, it looks like everybody's doing these wonderful tours, but they're really not, right? I went into the EXP world at a, at a virtual tour class the other day, and it was packed, thousands of people. I'm like, God, like, come on, guys. So buyers need to have a 24-hour day open house, whether it's after an earthquake, coronavirus, or a normal freaking market. They deserve and need to see homes. And in the best light so all this virtual training is i think a really good way to really learn so when we come out of this on the other side you could be way, way more effective like you don't have somebody like carrie Scholl running 90 agents all in person like no that's that's crap's virtual and that's how it should be and that's how our clients should be and there should be all docusign and all virtual and i don't know i just think this is a the excellent time to practice your craft get your listing presentations on your website Get your video vlogs up on your website. Get get in front of people a lot different. 
and, and more than anything, people demand and need information. Like I think I have a thousand views on the video that I did yesterday when I went live on my personal page talking about what a forbearance is. So now I've confused so many people with a forbearance and loan modification. Tonight, that's my message. Tomorrow, the <laughs> message is going to be, how do you not get evicted? To, you know, and we're going to do video, educational videos all day long, but I'm not only educating my sphere and my community, I'm educating the realtors in my community too, how to be mm -hmm. a leader and how to, you know, you know, how to transact in a virtual world, whether it's a physical transaction of a sale going through or a transaction of, you know, people's trust going back and forth. You're so, amazing, Michael. Well, I literally do this all day with you guys. Um, <laughs> you guys are amazing. And I know, I mean, we promoted this thing. I think we have 40 people on the page when we went live. We have over 66 comments already that tells me there's a need and, and people are valuing this. I think it's going to grow exponentially over the next coming weeks. Um, I'd like to get a little 10, 15 second takeaway from each of you as we wrap up the call. But before that, a little housekeeping. Tuesdays and Fridays, 11, 11 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to go live each week until this is over. We're in it together. We're going to have a series of these rock stars, add a couple if we need to. We want to keep continuity with you at booking, book ending the week on Tuesdays and Fridays. And we'll answer your questions as we progress. If you post them in the group during the week, we'll answer them on the next call the best we can. But um, I have a couple takeaways. Um, but before that, I'd like to just go around the horn. If you have any like 10 or 15 second closing remarks, any optimism, any, you know, words of advice or hope, I'd, I, I'd love to hear them. I can jump in on that. Mike, you just inspired me to bring something up. Um, really appreciated what you said. And I think if you're out there and you're a team leader, there's a tremendous opportunity to lead others to safety also, because some of the solo agents aren't sure how to move forward, right? And so what we've noticed is we've had a tremendous uptick in people applying to join the team. Our career pages are absolutely going berserk right now. Why? Because we're increasing our advertising spend when other people are reducing it. Right. So if you're a team leader that is financially positioned to do that and to help others join you and support their growth, now's the time to do that. And we heard leads are like all time low cost too right now. Are you experiencing that? Absolutely. Cost per lead is down. One thing I will say in a, in a strategic tip. I have stopped focusing. I'm a big, if you guys follow me at all, you know, I'm huge about advertising with digital marketing and social media. And I focus office often on getting the client upstream. What I found is there's so much competition for attention right now. I'm actually better off going directly to the people who are motivated to buy and sell now. Mm. So I've shifted some of my budget from Facebook to Zillow which if you follow me, that's a little bit like acid on my soul. However, <laughs> I'm all about results, right? So I'm going to read the tea leaves fast and react quickly. I love that. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah. All right. Around the horn, anybody have anything they'd like to inspire or, or nuggets to leave for people? This has been super valuable. Um, I think, I think that uh, the one thing that inspired me about all of what everybody's been saying here is, if you really put it into look at your business plan that you started the year with and think I'm going to do a new 90 day business plan, which is going to alter what you've been doing so mm -hmm. that you can come out 90 days from now on top as opposed to confused. So I think that it's, it's control your costs, right? Look at what you can, what you can get rid of, you know, even on your, in your home, in your home life, you know, with your family and things that you just, you look at and you go, wow, I'm spending a random 20, $30 here and there and all these different, Especially like Apple, I've got so many different things coming out of there. I'm like, what is that? That's just something, <laughs> I, something I, I subscribe to at you know midnight one night or whatever it is, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I need that in my business. And I'm like, what is that? And I didn't even know it was coming out. So you know, really control those costs and, and get people on your teams to look at their family's budget and have them have that time to to look at what they can control. Do a, a 90 day business plan for now, and like Carrie, you just said there, like you, you've shifted your focus to, you know, to people who are buying and selling now. That's amazing. So that's something that, you know, would alter somebody's business, business plan or idea for 90 days. Thanks. Right on it's normal. Appreciate it. So I, I thank you guys for all those amazing ideas and, and comments. Thank, thank you for your contribution. Uh, One of the things I'd like to oh, say Kim? is, yeah, 
I think the one word for me that just is huge is adapt. We have to adapt to the current yeah. conditions. Most of us that have been in the business a long time, we've seen some ups and downs in the market. This is very unusual, but I think adapting is the key. And if we can help our teams and our associates and even our clients understand, you know, we don't control everything. We wish we could, but we don't. And we have to help them in some way move forward. A lot of people are on pause right now, and that's understandable. But I think if we're adapting to the situation and help them, that's the key for me. I love that. Thank you, Kim. Tom awesome. Daves. For me, I'll jump in. So for me, I wrote down a lot of notes here today, but there were three main items that really stood out. Number one was mindset. I mean, everyone on the call, and we've been talking about mindset, growth-minded, positive, think big, go big, which is, I'm inspired <laughs> for being here today. And then number two is how we spend our time, um, you know, positive discipline with our rituals, with the things that we do to keep us on track. And then the third is who we spend our time with, spend our time with people that are growth-minded, positive, and going in the same direction as us, and that stretch us as well. Back to Jim Rohn, right? You're the sum total of the five people you connect with most. Yep. So um, I'm stretched and I'm growing just for being here. So thanks so much. I'm honored. Appreciate it, Randy. Love you, Tom. Appreciate that, man. Mike, closing uh, arguments, words. Yeah, dude, I, I just thought of something. Um, <laughs> I think Lincoln hit something, but not hard enough. Our expenses right now, Carrie Scholl, one of the, what, the number two agent in the freaking country is on with us. She just said, go all in on budget. I believe that to be true. Most of the agents that I coach, and there's hundreds of them, they say, I can't afford to go all in. Well, what Lincoln said is watch your expenses. I'm going to be open and honest right now. I canceled every single one of my credit cards and debit cards. So no more of those BS charges can go through right? Yeah. As agents, if you are in this business and you got in after 2011, I promise to God, you need to pay attention to what we're practicing, what we preach. Get your forbearance done, right? Get your, your income under control, get your spending under control, and make sure you take that couple thousand dollars a month that you found because you were smart and canceled all these little meaningless subscriptions, put yep. that back into your marketing. Have your designers do your presentations. Buy more ads. But what Carrie said also rings true. I want to strangle her for saying what she just did with Zillow because I just got out of that this week, <laughs> thank God. Because my Lopo ads are even better than Zillow ads and they're like an eighth the price. But like, but what I do then know- pass it in her soul, remember. <laughs> in my soul, she just spit it on me. <laughs> ah, devil. But, but the reality is we need to work with people that have to buy and sell today. Most of the agents in this country say, oh, so-and-so's thinking about moving. They want to move. I don't want to work with people that want to move. I want to work with people that have to move. Did you have a baby? Did you get fired? Did you get married? Did you get whatever? Did you get relocated? You are who I want to work with, not the people contemplating, right? I don't want an aspirational buyer. I don't want a research buyer. I want a transactional buyer, and I want them now. And same with the seller. And I'll shut up. I love you guys. I love you, Mike. Okay. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth. Yes. Our this was, sweet little New Yorker. Uh, I, this was just a really great half hour. Um, really inspiring. And just hearing uh, all of the ideas and all of the sort of things that the rest of this group is saying from different parts of the country, something that, um, you know, I don't have that, have that opportunity that much uh, is, I think, terrific. And we'll only get better, I'm sure, as we go along. So thanks for organizing this, Randy. Pleasure is mine. I'm, I'm truly humbled to be with you. Thank you, everybody, for being on the call. I just have a couple takeaway nuggets. Tom Daves is the best on the planet at, at doing a summary of nuggets. But mine was um, minute by minute, day by day. That That's so true. Everything's pivoting right now. Pivot's a pretty popular word right now, but really, you know, adaptive, be pivoting and be looking every day what's changing because it could change. Stay on your meds, Kim. That was a great <laughs> one. Meditation, exercise, diet, and sleep. Stay on your meds right now. It's more important than ever. 
um, listing presentation public on your website, Mike. That was brilliant. A yep. lot of people hide behind it. Mine's better than yours and all this stuff. Transparency is so powerful right now. Um, Marco Polo, that was another big one. And then I was past Keller Williams guy, not with that uh, organization anymore, but shift. The book shift is probably no more valuable than it could be right now for you. It was designed and, and built by yep. Gary Keller and Jay Pepizan back in the, the original shift of 2008. It is, again, very relevant. So I would encourage sure. everybody, if you haven't read it, get the book shift and read it again. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. Remember, this is a free show and contribution for you, except there is a price. Tag or share somebody that you care about or you love. You might see value in this. And we're going to bring the heat um, twice a week. Thank you all for being here. I know, I mean, we, we represent thousands of transactions annually just on this little call we're on today. And um, you guys, your time's valuable. I really appreciate your contrib uh, contributions back to the agents that need it so desperately. So thank you for that. And um, I just I appreciate you more than words could say. Thanks, Thank you, Thanks for bringing us together. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. And I'll see you this week. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. See you guys. Bye now. Thank